What's up, rockers? It's Pete Thorne. Welcome to the studio. Hey, you heard this guitar amp on all the guitar parts on that little track at the beginning of the video. This is an original high watt DR103 100 watt head owned by my friend John Shanks. So John brought the amp by the other day and I plugged it in and said, can I make a video of this? Because <laughs> it just sounded so good. So John Shanks is a guitar nerd extraordinaire. If you think you're nerdy or you think I'm nerdy, even John uh, kind of takes the cake. This guy has some of the coolest guitars and amplifiers of anybody uh, that, that I've ever met on planet Earth. And he's also a great songwriter with a ton of like top 10, top 50, top 100 hits to his name. And he plays guitar in Bon Jovi and he's also Bon Jovi's producer. High watts are not amps that I have a ton of experience with, that's for sure. It's the one amp from England that really I haven't used that much. I mean, I've even played through Selmers more than I have high watts. But it's an amp that's always intrigued me because Pete Townsend was my first guitar hero, really. And I love Gilmore and Alex Lifes and all kinds of folks that use the uh, the high watt amps over the years. So having the chance to kind of plug this one in and really mess with it here in my studio for a couple days has been really great because it's been an education. So anyways, perfect amp for an amps in the zone video. Now, I wanted to just talk about a couple of um, sort of misconceptions for a second about high watt amps. Number one, um, Pete Townsend, one of the main users of these amplifiers, but the DR-103 amplifier like this one is not an amp that, as I understand it, that he used that much. He actually used a model called the CP-103 uh, from the early days of The Who, um, you know, live at Leeds all the way through the 70s. Uh, and the CP-103 was born out of actually a Sound City amplifier design. Now, Dave Reeves, who started the High Watt Company, also was responsible for the Sound City amplifiers from the late 60s. Sound City was actually a music shop in London and they wanted to have some of their own amps to sell, I guess. And so under contract, Dave Reeves built amps for them. So the CP-103 was this early design they came up with and evidently Pete really liked and he used to use this, this early Sound City version of the CP-103, but it's a Dave Reeves design. The amp is pretty similar to the classic high watt DR-103, which we'll talk more about the control layout and stuff in just a second, but on the CP-103, the that Pete used, you had four inputs with four separate volume controls. And then you had a bass and treble for tone control, a fixed mid, and the tone stack in them, as I understand it, was kind of very much, very similar, a little different, but very similar to like a typical Fender sort of, of tone stack. No presence circuit in the amp, lots of negative feedback though. So the controls were basically, I mean, if you consider that Pete would just plug into one, and as I understand it, the only kind of real usable input of the four inputs on the amp, he would plug into the only one that really kind of sounded good, uh, turn the volume all the way up, run the bass on zero, run the treble up quite high, and then master somewhere between five and seven. So controls were basically a gain control, bass, treble, and a master. And that is the amp that, once again, my disclaimer, as I understand it, was used on like just a ton of classic Who stuff. So how does the DR-103, this amplifier, differ? On the CP-103, you had four input jacks and then a corresponding volume control for each input. And evidently, really only one of those inputs sounded good for guitar. So Pete would plug into the one, obviously, that sounded good. It was input one, I think and just turn up that one volume control. Now on the DR-103, you've got four inputs, but you've got two channels, okay? There's a normal channel and a brilliant channel volume. So volume control for each of those channels. And then the reason you've got four inputs is one is a high sensitivity and one is a low sensitivity for each channel. So just like on an old Marshall Super Lead or Plexi style four hole Marshall amplifier, you can blend the two channels by running a jumper cable or a Y cable. Uh, and you can blend in more of the normal channel, more of the brilliant channel and get a, a blend of each. Or you can just plug into one channel if you want to. And uh, the controls are rounded out by bass, middle, treble and presence for the tone stack. And then you've got a master volume last but not least to set the overall volume of the amplifier. John's, uh, John Shanks was actually modified, this one, by Pete Cornish to be just like David Gilmore's amps. So you'll see one of these holes is plugged and then you've got one input here labeled mix. Okay, so if I plug into that input, these volume controls are both actually ganged together internally and that's one of the, the Pete Cornish mods that he does to Gilmore's DR-103s. If you plug into the bottom inputs here, you can then access either the normal or the uh, brilliant channel separately. And the way I have the amps set up right now is kind of the way that I think Gilmore has been running his amps, at least for quite some time. So blending the two channels, the uh, are kind of similar levels really, uh, running the bass around 10 o'clock, the treble 
Trouble varies depending on which pictures I've seen of his amplifiers, Gilmore's amps. But running the treble a little below half right now. The mids are up on about one o'clock. Presence up quite high. And then the master actually set really quite low. And when the amp is set like this, it is clean. I mean, it's like basically crystal clean. So Gilmore may be the original pedal player that you know used a lot of different effects. And really this amp may be the original kind of pedal platform. You know, when we think about that, he would use tube drivers and, you know, the uh, compressors as well as the big muff, of course, you know, to get his drive and distortion sounds. And if the settings that I've seen are any indication, he was definitely running the amps like pretty much straight up clean, especially since he's mainly known for using single coil pickups, kind of low output pickups. So if you want to go down the rabbit hole a little bit like I did, you can look at both the Gilmore-ish website, which is a fantastic uh, resource as far as David Gilmore and the tones that he got and what gear he used on different tracks over the years and things like that, as well as the who.net website for lots of great information about Pete Townsend, his guitars, and his amplifiers over the years, especially high watts. There's just a ton of great info on there about Pete's high watts. So one thing I don't have here is a high watt cab. Not a lot of people say is a big, big part of the sound. The original Fane speakers, the ported cabinet, those original high watt cabinets. I had a friend that had one, and uh, although he loaded his with old greenbacks and G12H30s, I just remember that cabinet sounding exceptional. And I think it has a lot to do with the port in the back of the cabinet, but really, really good sounding cabinet. Nonetheless, here today, I'm running this DR103 through my old Marshall cabinet in the other room that's got uh, G12M black back speakers in it. And I set up the amp a few different ways on that track at the beginning of the video. For the main first guitar part, even though this isn't exactly the same as what Pete would use, uh, his CP103 amp uh, circuit, you know, the DR103 can definitely get you in that who zone pretty easily if you just crank it up and spend some time kind of turning the knobs and, and getting it kind of in that Pete Townsend zone. So for the first guitar part on the song at the beginning of the video, I played a Mac Mall guitar with P90s in it and I had the amp cranked up good and loud. Let's check out that part now and you can hear what it sounds like and I'll show you the settings that I used on the amp. So for that tone, I mean, I had the master up quite high and I had the mids up quite high. And one thing you'll find about these DR-103 amplifiers, one thing I noticed is that the mid-range control uh, really has a lot of effect on the amount of grind and drive you're getting. And that's because this mid control uh, is really big compared to, let's say, on a Marshall amplifier where you've got a 25K mid on an old Marshall Plexi. Dave Friedman was mentioning to me that this is a 100K mid. So when you, as you turn that mid up, you get a lot of mid range and you also get like way more distortion as you're turning up the mids. So it's pretty interesting and something that's kind of unique about this circuit, I think. You know, the tone that you're gonna get is really dependent on that mid range setting. Maybe I'll just play a little bit more through the amp now and turn the, uh, the normal volume and brilliant volume controls as well as the mid and just experiment a little bit so you can hear what kind of uh, sort of variety you can get in the tone by uh, using different variations of those different channel volumes which is really easy to do on this Pete Cornish modified amp because we've got the channels blended internally. Okay so the first thing I'll do is go from kind of like the Gilmore master volume setting on up to maybe where somebody like Townsend would have used it. So you can hear right away, it gets a lot crunchier and you're, you're distorting the power section and stuff when you turn it up and how clean it was when I first started using it. Okay, so now let's turn some knobs uh, with the master set up around 2.30.
So one thing I tried to do when coming up with this little piece of music and recording it to show off the DR-103 high watt amp is for each little part I tried to kind of get into the headspace and tonal space of a classic player that had used the high watt amplifiers. So two guys that always get mentioned in the same sentence uh, when somebody says high watt are Pete Townsend and David Gilmore. I mean they're just a given. Uh, but one guy that doesn't get mentioned like enough when it comes to classic rock guitar I don't think but also uh, when it comes to using high watt amps is Alex Lifeson. He was a really famous user of those amplifiers uh, all the way through the 70s he used them live as well as in the studio on tons of classic rush cuts uh, and all the way through like maybe 82 or so actually on the signals album so um, like going way back I'm sure he didn't cut this on a telly but check out this tone and this this riff from this song <laughs> Like, I could totally hear that being a high watt. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that it was, but it definitely has that character. And Alex was a total disciple of, like, Pete Townsend as well as Jimmy Page, you know, a couple of his really big influences. So, um, you know, that punchy, raw sound, I'm sure, appealed to him, and it's kind of what he was going for. Uh, so, anyways, who knows if that riff was was the high watt or not but one song i know was the high watt was new world man from the signals album it came right from the horse's mouth he said in an interview that they uh wrote and recorded that song all in one day it was his telly reissue a 52 telly reissue i think uh through the high watt amplifiers and he just added a chorus and a little bit of reverb and that's the sound on new world man once again here's the tone with no effects <laughs> Right? And if I just add a little bit of analog chorus, I've got this anodyne chorus here from Providence. Check out what happens to the tone. Right, really close to that sound, I think, that you hear on the record. Might be a little bit cleaner, but when I listen to him play it live, actually, he's got quite a bit more dirt in the tone. So anyway, I think the character's really there, and that was kind of the spirit, uh, tonally, that I was going for uh, with this part in the song at the beginning of the video. <laughs> So for the last little melody part in the song, when I kind of let the uh, the D chord and the E chord sustain, I thought I'll try and get like something in the vein of a of a Gilmore sound. I'm just gonna turn off some of these other effects I have going here for this sound and show you what this sounds like. Uh, just you know, straight into the amp. So just kind of a very, very clean sound. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, they are kind of the ultimate pedal platform, I guess, these amps. And they were the original pedal platform, maybe, uh, because David Gilmore would be one of the first guys that started using lots and lots of effects. So just kind of a really, really nice, straight up clean sound. Now, of course, to that, you could add some compression.
and that would be really cool. Or you could add some chorus, all kinds of stuff, and kind of flush the tone out. So I've set up kind of a 2290 style stereo delay um, in Logic right now. And it, actually, I'm going to turn on my Muff style fuzz, which is what I used on that little part in the song. It's a, a Ryra Muff clone. And I'm also going to turn on some chorus. So it's going to be chorus, fuzz, and delay. And this is what you get. So thanks to John Shanks for letting me play through your cool uh, John Shanks Custom High Watt 100 DR103 amp. Although not exactly the same circuit, you can still totally get in that Pete Townsend zone as well as Alex Lifeson. These amps are just really interesting. They are punishingly loud, but when you can use them in a studio setup like this with a cab isolated in the other room, it's really fun to get in there and tweak and listen to some of the, of the tones, and they really sit in a mix, just great. You can get just the right amount of punch, just the right amount of drive, and you know, lots of clean headroom if you want it on tap, and they're just really fun. It's its own thing. I've long said they're sort of like the British Fender, and I guess with that tone stack being kind of similar to Fenders in some ways, but it's got its own thing going on. Once again, with the 100K mid and all that stuff, just a really, really interesting, great, iconic amplifier. Uh, please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe. You'll get an alert every time I put out a new video. Thanks for watching. I'm Pete Thorne. Take care. Over and out, rockers.